Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, there are calls for empathy and the end of mistreatment of Africans stuck on the border of Ukraine as they try to free the war that's followed Russia's invasion. Thousands of Africans study in Ukraine and many have been sharing their hurt and fear after having been sidelined, attacked and discriminated against as they try to make it out. Now, the African Union's responded to mounting accounts of Africans being mistreated as they try to flee Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Leaders from the continent have said that they are disturbed at reports that African citizens have been refused crossing to safety over the Polish border. The African Union said that singling out Africans trying to escape war would be shockingly racist and called on all countries to show the same amount of empathy to all victims of the conflict. Now, the reports add a disturbing dimension to the conflict that has sent half a million people flooding out of the country. Amongst them, Africans that hail from everywhere from Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria to Morocco and Ivory Coast. More than 20% of Ukraine's international students are Africans. Some say that many non-white people have been prevented from boarding buses and trains, refused entry into Poland, been forced to give up their seats and been threatened with violence while stuck at borders. It was a very terrible experience for me. Like, the last 10 days in Ukraine was very, very difficult for me. Like, it wasn't what I was expecting. The, the military there was very mean. They were, not just, they were just so mean to us, like, as if we were no humans. No food, nothing, no support. It was just on your own. All they did was go to your embassy. If your embassy is not there, the rest they leave it up to you. We worked for like 12 hours with no food and nothing. You just have to. That was one of my worst experiences. Like the soldiers I was on duty that day was mean. They were just so heartless. Like they treated us like animals totally. So they started chasing us away, hitting us with wood. And even, you can see they even hit my leg right here. Now, there are also some reports of solidarity and support for frightened Africans who have made it over the border. Poland's ambassadors dismissed claims of unfair treatment. Many African governments, meanwhile, have been scrambling to help their nationals escape. Nigeria has called for its citizens to be treated with dignity. Samuel Okoya has more. It's quite a big uh, problem in Nigeria. The social media has been very active reporting events in, 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 in Poland and uh, Ukraine. And uh, the suffering Nigerians have been going through uh, it has become quite an issue for many people who have relatives there. Some of these people are quite young students. Some of these people have uh, babies. And we've seen a lot of uh, hardship they are, they are going through. Uh, when this war started, the feeling was that uh, the... the Ukrainians uh, have been oppressed, but now the Nigerians are beginning to have this feeling that the, the, oppressed, the oppressed are becoming the oppressors, given the way the Nigerians and other Africans have been treated in the country. And what are some of the reports that you're hearing? What, what is this treatment? We saw, we heard a little bit there from a young man who says, he said that the, the border guards were mean, but does it go beyond that? Well, we've had cases of where people were almost outrightly robbed. We hear of cases where uh, Nigerians have been accused, some to be Russians, even though clearly they are Africans, and for this reason they were beaten up that uh, they are Russians, they are working for the Russians. We've heard of cases where uh, women with children, babies, have been uh, denied uh, seats in, in trains in, in in, in buses, we've heard of cases where even those who had seats who have been forced uh, to give up these seats so that uh, some other persons can take these seats. We've seen photographs or, and videos from bus stations, train stations, where you see on all those that are left behind are just uh, Africans, mainly Nigerians. So what's the response been from the Nigerian government? Well, the Nigerian government uh, has been quite... Uh, uh, I mean, has, has responded on this. Uh, it said uh, everybody should be treated with dignity. That's in a conflict situation. Everybody should, under U the UN Convention, everybody should have a right to escape, irrespective of the color of their skin, irrespective of the passports they are carrying. And the government said Iranian authorities and uh, Polish authorities have denied Nigerians the rights to escape. And it said 
this should stop so that uh, the, the Nigerians should be allowed to go to safety. So, the, uh, of course, the Nigerian government cited instances also where Nigerians have been uh, denied um, uh, entry into Poland. The government outrightly said there is discrimination and Nigerians have been discriminated on account of their skin color. Simon Okoye there for us. On the other hand, the war has also left Ukrainians stuck across Africa. Following the closure of Ukrainian airspace to civilian flights because of Russia's military action, around 1,000 Ukrainian tourists are stranded in Zanzibar. Despite the ongoing fighting, many of them are telling France 24 that they still want to go home. Emerald Maxwell has more. They're thousands of miles from home while their country is at war. After Ukraine closed its airspace last week, these Ukrainian tourists are stranded in Zanzibar with no idea what will happen next. Our son is right now in Kiev and he's with my parents, uh, with husband's parents, and he's actually spending uh, the second night in the bomb shell. And we don't know and, uh, how we will get out of here. Many are desperate to get back, with some facing financial constraints. People who are stuck here, they have no money to stay at the houses maybe or the hotels. They have no money to buy the food. They don't care about uh, the war. They want to go to their families. We don't want to stay in another country. Uh, we want to come back in Ukraine. We want uh, to uh, protect our uh, motherland. We want to fight. Zanzibar's government says it's looking for ways to support them. We are talking to their ambassadors, tour operators and hotel owners to find a way to help them. We want to plan charter flights to fly them to neighboring countries. And we have now asked hotels to provide them with services during this difficult time. In the meantime, expat Ukrainians have been providing assistance to their fellow citizens. We're trying to be together with our people here. Uh, we are one hand like here and the same in Ukraine. We support each other. And uh, right now I took responsibility to help the people with medication here for those tourists. As they wait for news, the tourists are hoping they'll be evacuated near a home, though they worry about what they'll find when they get there. Well, on Monday at a UN Security Council meeting, Ghana and Kenya called for an end to the violence in Ukraine. However, as international sanctions and condemnation of Russia's attack on its neighbours have gathered pace. Overall, Africa has been less outspoken in its criticism of the invasion. There have been expressions of concern, but few firm positions of opposition have been taken. Doug Yates gives us an overview of where countries on the continent stand with regards to the war. Well, some of the countries which are now seated on the Security Council in rotating positions, like Gabon, which has just rejoined this year, or Ghana, or Kenya have uh, taken clear stands uh, that is uh, for the respect of territorial sovereignty. This is a UN position, this is an African position. And that despite the fact that in the case of Ghana and Kenya, Kenya they're quite dependent on grain coming from the region. Um, uh, South Africa has uh, had a turn in its opinion after remaining silent during the Crimean invasion in 2014. South Africa has uh, asked for Russia to, uh, to, to withdraw. It made a powerful critique. Uh, on the other hand, some of the countries in Francophone Africa, in the Sahel, like Mali, uh, Burkina Faso, and Central African Republic, most notably, have uh, been willing to express their support for Russia and to play along with the misinformation that Vladimir Putin has been peddling. But the large majority of African countries have simply not stated a position. And that silence speaks loudly about how they might be trying to reposition themselves in a world where Russia is returning. Mm -hmm. And and amongst those nations which have been more open in their condemnation of Putin's war, is there a common denominator? Yeah, um, many of them are, are democracies and, uh, and uh, therefore, and, and Western allies, and therefore they side with France, they side with Europe in their opposition to what Russia is doing, Russia being seen as the proponent of authoritarian regimes, coup d'etats. So, um, for example, the, in Senegal, you have Macky Sall, who is right now serving as AU chair, and he's asking for respect of international law 
clearly behind this is also a desire to uh, appeal for democracy, for democratic values, which Macky Sall believes he represents. The same for Ghana, where, where Akufa Addo uh, represents uh, one of the strong West African pillars for democracy in a region that's ravaged by coup d'etats and authoritarianism. And the same for Kenya. So these are democracies, they're pro-Western powers, even in the case of Gabon, where um, its democratic practices are questioned, its alliance with France, with the West, or not. So what's motivating the countries who are hedging their bets when it comes to Russia? Well, we've been looking at Russian um, military intervention and support for coup d'etats and regimes failed states in the region. And we've been seeing a firm called Wagner, uh, the Wagner Group, sending mercenaries in to try to create stability. And this has brought a lot of affection from the African street in, in, in Burkina Faso, in Ouagadougou, in Bamako, in these countries that have fallen to coup d'etats and whose security in the war on terror depends on Russian troops. They see Russian military intervention as potentially a good thing. And of course, they're also being fed terrible misinformation over the internet. Doug Yates, they're giving us a bit of an overview of Africa's positioning on the war uh, in Ukraine. That is though all we have time for for Eye on Africa. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care.